This is Gases 1, which is an introduction to gases. First, I'd like to talk about four special properties of gases. Number one, as I'm sure you're already aware, gases will expand to fill any available space, as we can see in this animation. Number two, most gases are colorless and odorless, although as you've seen in class, there are exceptions. Number three, volume, pressure, and temperature are interrelated for gases. Number four, all gases can be mixed in any proportion to form solutions in which a gas is the solvent and gases are the solutes in the solvent. All right, let's take a look at an apparatus here. So what you see is something called a barometer. A barometer can be used to measure atmospheric pressure. What we have here is we have a column that is filled with mercury. We also have a vessel here that contains mercury. Now we've seen a phenomenon very similar to this in a couple labs so far this year in our double density lab, and also in our limiting reactant stoichiometry lab, in which case we were using water displacement. So when this column of mercury is inverted in mercury, the mercur mercury will stay in the column. Well, that is because the atmospheric pressure is pushing down, exerting a force on the surface here, all right? which is creating this little vacuum up top. Now, what do you think is gonna happen as the atmospheric pressure increases? Well, the level is going to increase, okay? Likewise, if the atmospheric pressure decreases, then the column, the mercury level will decrease. So, this is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Now, at sea level, our standard atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, all right? And there are numerous units for pressure. You're gonna be responsible for knowing all of these. So 760 millimeters of mercury is the equivalent of one atmosphere of pressure. Now that's something you're familiar with because we've talked about standard temperature and pressure, and we talked about the standard pressure being one atmosphere. 760 millimeters of mercury is also equal to 760 torr, which is equal to 14.7 PSI or pounds per square inch, which should make sense. That is the uh, pressure exerted per square inch on the surface there. That is also equal to 101.3 kilopascals, which is equal to 1.01 bar. Now, it's interesting to note that the base SI unit for pressure is actually a pascal, but we usually will express them in kilopascals because uh, we get such a large number when we express common pressures using SI unit of pascal. So, at this point, I'm going to really elaborate on special property number three, which we were looking at how pressure, volume, and temperature are interrelated for a particular mass of gas. Now, in order to do that, I'm gonna take you to an online PHET simulation. The URL is at the bottom, and I would encourage you to visit this simulation on your own. All right, so let's take a look at what we have going on here. So we have a, a chamber here that we can manipulate the volume of. We have a thermometer to uh, monitor temperature. 
And then we also have a pressure gauge and it is displayed in atmospheres. Remember one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is also equal to 760 torr. So I am gonna start off by um, putting uh, 50 molecules into the chamber. I'm gonna do the heavy species first followed by 50 of the light species. So the first thing you should notice is we have an increase in pressure. Uh, temperature is in 300 Kelvin. Remember, Kelvin is uh, an absolute scale for measuring temperature. And we can uh, find Kelvin by adding 273 to degrees Celsius when needed. Now, I am going to uh, go ahead and put under the constant parameters none. So we can just take a look at what's happening here. I, I want to point out the speed or the magnitude of the velocity of these individual species. Notice how the lighter species in red are moving faster than the heavier species in blue. Okay, now I am going to compare pressure and volume and I'm gonna hold temperature constant. So in order to do this, I'm gonna take this little guy down here and I'm going to do some work on the system by decreasing the volume. So let's go ahead and decrease the volume. And if I decrease it like there, you can see that pressure has gone up. Now, the reason pressure has gone up is you can notice that there are more collisions between these molecules and the container, and that is causing pressure to increase. Let me decrease volume even more. Pressure goes up again. So what we're seeing is that as I decrease the volume, I'm increasing the pressure. So if I increase the volume, we should see the pressure decrease. So they are inversely proportional. Now, I am going to hold the volume constant and I wanna compare pressure and temperature. So volume is constant. I'm going to add heat to the system. As I add heat, you can see based on the thermometer here, I'm approaching and now over 400 Kelvin. I'm gonna continue to add heat and I want you to look at the pressure gauge. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up if volume is held constant. I'm gonna keep going. And what else do you notice? Well, you should notice that the collisions with the container, the overall kinetic energy of these molecules is increasing, which means their speed is increasing, which means they're having collisions with the outside of this container more often. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more heat here. Continue heating. We see these molecules are really moving fast now. We see temperature is over 200 atmospheres. And so we're seeing as temperature goes up, pressure goes up if volume is constant. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I hold pressure constant and I manipulate the volume and the temperature. So what I'm gonna do now is add heat to the system and we're gonna see how the volume responds to an increase in temperature. Okay, temperature's going up, temperature's going up. And what do we see happening? We see volume increasing as a result. Let me add a little bit more temperature. Okay, and volume's increasing. So these are also directly proportional. As the volume gets larger, the temperature gets larger. As I add heat to the system, increasing the temperature, we see the volume increasing if pressure is held constant. So to recap, we've shown in this first video how these two 
or excuse me, these three variables of volume, temperature, and pressure are interrelated. So that simulation does an excellent job of showing you how pressure, temperature, and volume are interrelated. And in this unit, we're going to continue looking at molecular theory on both atomic and molecular motion for chemical and physical properties. Uh, we're especially going to look at our Georgia standards of excellence that deal with using models to quantitatively, conceptually, and graphically represent relationships between pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles of gases. I'll see you guys in class.